So first I'll tell you a little bit about the design decal because te technically it came first. Um, so the design decal started um, partially out of Berkeley Innovation. So Berkeley Innovation is a undergraduate student group with people from engineering, but then people from interdisciplinary studies in English and rhetoric and anthropology and business and architecture who all have one thing in common is um, they all want to work on projects for kicks in their spare time because they like making things. Um, and also because they all sort of share this value of human-centered design. So not design for the sake of design, but design um, with the purpose of serving people. Oh, this did not. Decal.org. Um, and so, yes. So the way design started was um, in Berkeley Innovation, um, we had a lot of students who came in and they weren't quite, they knew they wanted to join the club, but they weren't quite solid on the basics in terms, it's like they, they thought it was interesting, but they didn't really know what they were getting themselves into. Um, and so the club had issues with, you know, repeating themselves, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and also sort of communicating what human-centered design is while simultaneously doing it. So they sort of split it. So now design is sort of the outreach branch of Berkeley Innovation in many ways. Um, so what it consists of, it's a 15-week introductory design theory and design practice course. Um, and the goal of the course is um, to communicate what design is through hands-on projects. So we, for the first project, we tell them to go and understand a human need um, using often qualitative methods, and we push them on this. A lot of people like to pretend that surveys are qualitative, and we say, no, that's a survey. You need to go out and you need to watch people in line at the bathroom. You need to watch people um, preparing for a date. You need to watch people um, trying on shoes at the store, you can't just ask them about it in a survey. Um, so in the first project, we often sort of end it at the need and tell them, okay, you can come up with the sketch. And then for the second project, we have them go a little further. So we say, okay, understand the problem, understand the human problem, and then once you're ready, now let's start diving into prototyping and building and what most people think of as design. Um, and the other sort of interesting thing that's been great with the course thread um, that we're sort of working with the course thread program to get up is we also try to communicate design theory in a way that's approachable and interesting and engaging. So for that, we've been pulling a lot of um, TED Talks from the TED conference. Um, and once again, we pull technologists. We'll also, um, there's a great talk by Rory Sutherland, who's from advertising, talking about sort of reframing the problem of, um, like you might think, oh, the train is too slow for between London and Paris. An engineer might say, oh, well, just make the train faster. An ad man says, well, get supermodels to walk down the length of the train, and people want the train to go slower. And so it's sort of stepping back and thinking about, well, what is the real problem? Is it that, oh, we need to make the train faster, or we just need to make people's experiences better? Um, so a lot of design is stepping one layer back and instead of saying, oh, design, you're an engineering, this is what design is, saying, well, you will come from different disciplines. So if you're from architecture, you might be thinking about building design, but there's other people out there who design software, who design products, who design signage, who design like retail experiences. And those are equally valid and you can use a human-centered approach for all of them. Um, and so, yeah, so the, the course has been going on for it's now in its fourth semester, um, and it's sort of blossomed very quickly. It went from about 20 people in the first round to now we get like 50 people in the first week, which gets weeded down to a hopefully more manageable 30. Um, as a female engineer, it is mind-boggling to have so many women who are interested. Granted, they're not from engineering, but this past semester we have about two-thirds women, which if you come from engineering looks amazing. Um, because it actually says, okay, we're getting a wider audience of people than just, you know, the male-dominated engineers um, thinking about these problems, which is fantastic. Um, so that's the design decal. The course thread program um, sort of has a funny, course thread human-centered design, has sort of a funny story. So um, Karen is sort of the key to this. Karen was a rhetoric student in um, the design decal, and she just sort of stumbled into the decal course and said, this is awesome. Um, she came at things from a fundamentally different perspective because she saw everything as like the rhetoric of objects. How are we talking about our lives? How does, 
that um, intersect with the way we build our lives and is there a way to that she as a rhetoric student can contribute to this and obviously she's not coming in with the ability to weld or program but she's really good at understanding people and having deep conversations and interviewing um, and that's ridiculously critical for human-centered design and most um, most designers that is not their forte most designers um, are attracted to it because they build things not because they really like digging into the nitty-gritty of, of human problems so she was fantastic at that um, and she's now working at smart design doing just that in their femden which is so perfect for her um, but anywho so she took the the design decal and she found the course thread program and said oh, this is like so us, because it's interdisciplinary, which human-centered design fundamentally it is. You have to have the understanding of the human problem, and you also have to have an understanding of the built environment. Um, and it's, it was a great way to sort of bring together, um, bring together in a more formal way what the design decal started doing, which is sort of an informal way, getting people who are all sort of interested in this idea together to let's actually make this more formal through courses that you can take, making sure you get recognition for your interest in a way sort of that's beyond just, I took this decal one time. Um, and so she contacted the course thread program who contacted um, some professors, both in the Berkeley Institute of Design and the Center for New Media saying, hey, this would be a really good course thread program and lo, it became a course thread. Um, and so yes, thus far it's, been very interesting. Um, we found that the the engineering professors are going, this is amazing, we're getting humanities students in our classes. Mm -hmm. the, um, the humanities students are going, whoa, wait a minute, there are engineering classes I can take. Whoa, this is crazy. The engineering students are going, wait, there's, there's humanities classes that are relevant to what I'm interested in doing that are actually relevant to building things in the real world and oftentimes why they were interested in engineering in the first place. So thinking about human problems that they can then address. And then the humanities professors are going, this is great. We have people with a very different point of view on things, but they're coming in with their technical expertise and adding um, to the courses themselves. Um, so th from the professor's perspective, they've, they've loved this program. And we often find them to be our biggest advocates in terms of you know, when they advise students saying, hey, have you checked out this program? You seem to be interested in this style of course. Um, and then from interviewing students, I'm so happy to see the Facebook page because I had students going, similar to Melissa, we have no idea who else is in this course thread, but we want and the human-centered design community because they're sort of proactive, you know, problem solvers at heart, um, want to know who they can connect with and who they can work with on projects and who they can talk to as kindred spirits. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the Facebook um, community kind of developing around the course threads. Um, and yeah, generally their, their main benefits from the course thread program were career development. So identifying that, oh wait, there's, you know, there's human rights is this whole theme area where you can dive into the human rights world and you might come from a law perspective or um, a more social science perspective and there is a place for you in this theme. Um, the human-centered design students found the exact same thing. So you can be an engineer, you can be a rhetoric student, but there's still a place for you in human-centered design. Um, so like I said, Karen went on to work at Smart Design, which generally makes products, um, but they have a special group called the Femden, which looks at products for women. Um, and so she's now working there looking at um, totally using her rhetoric background, which is fantastic because it's very much so needed and appreciated, on how, how we talk about products and specifically how we talk about products with respect to um, the female market. Um, and then if you are from other disciplines, you can look at it and say, oh, well, there's all sorts of ways that I can apply human-centered design to architecture, to computer science, to engineering, um, that, that sort of bring it all together. So instead of saying, I can stay in my sort of engineering silo and just live in that technical world, they can actually branch out into the real human problems that they're trying to address in the first place. Um, and identify places in, industry that actually are tackling those problems. Um, so career-wise, it's very helpful. Forming that community through Facebook, through student clubs, identifying um, fellow students in the program has been very important for them. And then finally, getting that broad, um, that broad background in design. 
Um, one of the really common things that is talked about, partially because it's in, um, I think it's Tom Kelly's The Art of Innovation from IDEO, they talk about T-shaped people in human-centered design. And that's because if you have a bunch of I-shaped people, you have a lot of depth in one technical expertise. You're either really good at anthropology, you're really good at engineering, you're really good at you know, medicine. But if you can't talk amongst your peers in a team, then it doesn't matter how good you are at your, at your particular expertise, you can't collaborate with others. Um, so for most students, when they take course thread courses, they're sort of crossing that T. They're making sure that they not only know their um, disciplinary depth, but they also can talk to others across a range of disciplines. So even if you're an engineer, you can talk in a way that an anthropologist might start to recognize as, oh, you're talking about contextual inquiry. Well, it's not exactly ethnography, but I sort of get where you're trying to go. Or if you're from anthropology, you can start talking about like, okay, well, oh, you're doing brainstorming right now. I know what that is. I can still help contribute. Um, so it's really making sure that they can appreciate other perspectives and approaches to design um, and potentially collaborate with each other better in the future. So I'm, I'm looking forward to where this course program will go since it's very, very, very promising, at least within human-centered design.